You've probably heard the rumors, or perhaps looked at the leaks. In fact, OnePlus has been slowly spilling the beans about their new flagship smartphone, the OnePlus 8 Pro. Now, the company is taking a different approach this time by launching two new phones, the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro. And these phones are meant to replace the OnePlus 7T and the 7 Pro, respectively. So I'm here to give you guys a complete breakdown on some of the differences between the 7 series and the 8 series, some of the features they've added, removed, and finally discuss pricing on these new phones because this is not the OnePlus we used to know, my friends. It's really not. The Razer Death Adder V2, the gaming icon that just got upgraded with a lighter body, next-gen sensor, and optical switches for maximum reliability and speed, the classic ergonomic shape handles like no other. Find out why 10 million other users love the Death Adder down below. All right, so I'm gonna start with the 8 Pro. OnePlus has addressed a few issues that I've had with the 7 Pro. So the edges on the display are less aggressive, but not completely flat like the 7T. The body is slightly taller and slimmer compared to the 7 Pro. However, the camera bump is slightly bigger and noticeably protruded, so I'm not a big fan of that. The corners are less rounded, which I like, and the back looks absolutely beautiful, guys. I have the Ultramarine Blue model, and while it is composed of Gorilla Glass, just like the 7 Pro, they've added a matte texture, giving it a really soft, smooth, anti-reflective look. Now, you can pick up the 8 Pro in two other color options. Uh, one of them is Glacial Green, and the other is Onyx Black. They've still kept the alert slider on the side, which is still one of my favorite features of OnePlus devices. And you might notice something different about the selfie camera. If you recall, the 7 Pro had a motorized pop-up camera, resulting in a notchless design, but they took a step back this time and went with a punch hole camera cutout on the top left-hand side of the display. I don't mind it at all since it is still the norm with modern Android smartphones, but to me, it's just really interesting how they bragged about the durability of that motorized camera last year. Just, just saying. The OnePlus 8, on the other hand, is a slightly smaller version of the 8 Pro. The design is basically the same with the exception of the display as the curve doesn't extend all the way to the edges like the 8 Pro, and I like that. The back is a welcoming change over the 7T, so you can say goodbye to that huge circular camera bump and greet yourselves with a subtle, low-profile look just like the 8 Pro. In fact, the 8 looks very similar to the 7 Pro, but I'm not a fan of this color. This is the interstellar glow model that's super reflective and a fingerprint magnet, but you can pick it up in different colors just like the 8 Pro. Moving on to the display, I guess we all saw this coming. It's a 120Hz Quad HD+, AMOLED screen spanning across 6.78 inches versus 6.67 inches, 90 hertz, uh, with that same resolution on the 7 Pro. Now, do I notice a huge difference between the two? Yes, but it isn't that significant, and it shouldn't be your first reason to upgrade from the 7 Pro. I should also mention that it doesn't stay at 120 hertz constantly. In fact, when your phone is idle or when you're viewing anything static, the phone dynamically shifts down to 60 hertz, and OnePlus did that to preserve battery life. They're also taking a step forward in providing a good quality display without sacrificing on color accuracy, as they do come factory calibrated, which is nice. Now, unfortunately, my review sample started showing a weird green cast on the top right-hand side at the lowest brightness setting, and there were banding issues as well. Now, I did end up confirming with some of my colleagues who were testing the exact same phone, but they didn't experience any of these issues, so I guess I just ended up receiving a dud sample. But nonetheless, this is a gray screen for content consumption. And honestly, I can't tell if there's a difference between the 8 Pro and the 7 Pro minus that curve because watching content on the 7 Pro is really not that great with that aggressive curve versus the 8 Pro, which seems to be a little bit better. The OnePlus 8, on the other hand, features a 1080p plus display, just like the 7T, with the same refresh rate at 90 Hertz which is really disappointing because it doesn't look like they've upgraded anything here. I would have rather preferred 120 hertz at 1080p because that would have made a lot more sense compared to the 7T uh, because there's really nothing new here. I mean, sure, the display on the 8 is a little bit brighter compared to the 7T, but I think OnePlus just took an L here. Both these phones come with dual stereo speakers and they sound great. I did notice a huge difference between the 8 series and the 7 series, and they still feature in-display fingerprint sensors. Oddly enough, the 8 Pro fell slower compared to the 7 Pro when it came to unlocking the device. Plus, the 8 Pro had trouble reading my fingerprint as well. I tried resetting and rescanning my thumbprint multiple times. It just still feels slower compared to the 7 Pro which is just really weird. The specs on these phones are 
as expected, top of the line, guys. OnePlus hasn't cut any corners here. They both come with the Snapdragon 865 SoC, 8 or 12 gigabytes of RAM. Keep in mind that the 8 Pro comes with LPDDR5 versus LPDDR4X on the standard 8. I'm not sure if there's a scientific way to test the difference between the two in real world, but I might have to look into that a little bit later. Both also come with 128 and 256 gigabytes of storage, with the 8 Pro being slightly faster. The battery gets a welcoming upgrade over the 7 Pro and the 7T, so the 8 Pro has 4,500 milliamp hours and the 8 gets 4,300 milliamp hours. And as always, both these feature the fastest charging protocol that OnePlus can deliver. In this case, it's Warp Charge 30T. It's basically the same as the 7 series. However, they finally, finally managed to add wireless charging support only on the 8 Pro. And I repeat, only on the 8 Pro. And it's fast, guys. They're calling it Warp Charge 30 Wireless, which tops the battery on the 8 Pro to 50% in 30 minutes. And check this out, guys. The charger itself is a unique piece of engineering. This thing comes with a fan to help dissipate the heat as it gets as loud as 30 decibels, which on paper might seem quiet, but not ideal when you have it beside your bed. There is a setting on the phone that can turn off the fan, but that'll reduce charging speeds. I spoke with OnePlus on the backbones of this technology, and it's quite fascinating at what they were able to accomplish. Basically, they're pumping in more voltage and reducing the amps, which then results in higher charging rate. And inside the phone, there are isolated charge pumps that reduce the voltage down to a safer standard that can charge the battery. If you're interested in learning more, I'll leave a link to an article by The Verge explaining the whole process. It's really good stuff. Now, I should mention that you don't have to get that dedicated wireless charger to experience a wireless charging on the 8 Pro. In fact, this phone does support regular Qi-enabled wireless chargers. Just keep in mind that it's not going to charge as fast as the dedicated charger that OnePlus offers. Now, this phone also features support for reverse wireless charging, so if that's something that you're looking into, it's, it's nice to have. And finally, uh, the 8 Pro gets the official IP68 water-resistant rating, so if that's something that you were looking for, it's here. Oxygen OS on the 8 and the 8 Pro look basically the same compared to the 7 series. You've probably heard me say this before, but this is by far my favorite Android operating system, even compared to Google's offering. There are tons of customization options. We've got new dynamic wallpapers that look really good. It's clean and simple to use. They've added a new feature though, and it's called MEMC technology. Basically using advanced algorithms, it converts 24 frames per second content to a higher frame rate that should result in a smooth playback experience. Think of it as one of those motion smoothening features that are available on TVs that convert 24 frames per second content to 60 FPS but you're now getting that on a smartphone. Now, honestly, I'm not a fan of this feature because if I shoot content in 24 frames per second, I'd rather watch it in that frame rate because then you kill that cinematic experience. Now, luckily you can turn it off through the settings. So thank you OnePlus for giving us that option. Finally, let's talk about those cameras. The 8 Pro features a quad camera setup. So there's a 48 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, a 48 megapixel standard wide angle lens, and an 8 megapixel telephoto that's 3x optical zoom and up to 30x digital zoom. Then there's a color filter camera, which isn't really a dedicated camera, but it can be used to create artistic lighting effects in real time, according to OnePlus, which looks very limiting and quite frankly useless because these filters can be applied in post through a third party software. So I don't really see a purpose for this feature. The standard 8 gets three cameras, but they've made it worse this time. So you get a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, a 48 megapixel main sensor, and, and a two megapixel macro camera. That's right, two megapixels. So they've chopped the telephoto lens, like what's found on the 7T, the 7 Pro, and the 8 Pro, and instead they're using the main wide angle camera to crop or digitally crop to get that telephoto effect. <sighs> Honestly, at this point, I don't really know what to say, guys. In fact, I just decided to take all these phones for a little photo shoot uh, and just see how they stack up against each other. Let's start with that two megapixel macro lens on the standard eight. It's awful, guys. I mean, this shouldn't be legal in 2019. The color balance is off. Obviously, you lose a ton of detail. It's a very questionable decision by OnePlus, in my opinion. Now, moving on to the main sensors, OnePlus has improved white balance and that results in true to life colors out of the box, but the implementation of this new sensor comes with major compromises. Dynamic range is significantly worse, especially compared to the 7 Pro and the 7T. 
The colors looked washed out on the 8 series, whereas if you look at the 7 Pro and the 7T, there is a good balance of contrast and saturation. Generally, I'd still pick the 7 Pro because the out-of-the-box pictures look way, way better than these new phones. And if you look at this shot right here, <laughs> it's just so weird to see the 8 Pro get destroyed by its predecessor. The selfie cameras are noticeably better on the 8 series, but I really wish that OnePlus improved the contrast factor. That's what's missing here. I didn't see a major improvement in low light, and who knows what software updates can do to these phones later on, so definitely stick around for my long-term review when I revisit the camera on the 8 series. So, how much do these new phones cost? You guys ready for this? The OnePlus 8 starts at $700, and for that, you get 8GB of RAM and 120GB of storage. For an extra $100, you get 4 extra gigs of RAM and twice the storage. Now the OnePlus 8 Pro starts at $900 for 8 gigs of RAM and 120 gigabytes of storage. And if you want the absolute spec up variant, prepare to spend $1,000 on a OnePlus phone. That's right, OnePlus did it. They finally managed to come out with a $1,000 smartphone. And I'm still in shock from learning that. You see, one, this is not the OnePlus we used to know people. In fact, they cannot be considered as the so-called mid-range smartphone manufacturer these days because they've officially entered the elite smartphone market to compete against Samsung and the rest of the competition. And I can't quite blame OnePlus for pricing their phones at $900 and $800 or $700 because if you really think about it, when a smartphone manufacturer decides to come out with their flagship smartphone and if they're the first in line to hit the market in 2020, with a certain price point. In this case, it's Samsung with the S20, because those phones start at $1,000. It automatically gives other smartphone manufacturers to compete with that price point. And while the 8 Pro and the 8 are still less expensive compared to the Galaxy S20 series, it just it's just the way how the market's gonna go. And unfortunately, it's us, the consumers, paying that premium, which, uh, which is just unfortunate. Now OnePlus will sell the 7T and the 7 Pro at much lower price points compared to the 8 and the 8 Pro. Uh, and I think that's a pretty good deal because these phones are still really, really good and I'd still recommend them any time of the day. But that's that's where I stand right now. It's just, I, I don't know, I can't give you guys a full verdict on the 8 and the 8 Pro. In fact, stick around for my long-term review of these phones later on. I actually have some unfinished business because I have to review the S20 Ultra, which is in the works. So I'll stick around for that. But until then, stay safe, spend responsibly, and uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.